In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. We stand and make confession facing the processional cross here in the back. Let us pray. God of mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Together saying, most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the scriptures we learn, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sin. And as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, that good news is declared to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us rejoice singing the opening hymn for the beauty of the earth.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And also you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We rest. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 45. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form lightness and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 1. To the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you. Because of our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of people we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place where your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. This is the word of the Lord.
Our gospel is from the gospel according to St. Matthew, Matthew 22, beginning with verse 15. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius, and he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then Jesus said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray again the prayer of the day. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we end the church year, we just have a few weeks left, and we continue in the Gospel of Matthew, which has been our main lessons for this year, our main gospel. I hope that you are all continuing your reading and your study of the book of Matthew. These last few weeks, we have looked at parables, parables about doing or not doing what God were in the images of a father, a landowner, or a king, what God wanted, or submitting to the authority. Sons working in the vineyard, tenants giving the owner fruit, invitees accepting the king's invitation to his son's wedding feast and wearing the proper garb. Parables, stories, stories to teach. Today, our lesson moves into real life. This is not a story, this is for real. It is the real world of taxes and death. Taxes, money, followed by a question from the Sadducees about death and resurrection. 
although we didn't hear verses 23 through 33 in our lectionary. They are plotting against Jesus. They really are trying to catch him up in his teaching. They are trying to find a reason to put him to death. The question that they ask of him today as they say, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? That question is a trap. Now, hear me loud and clear. This text is not just about taxes, at least not taxes like we know taxes. The question, the question here really is, is it appropriate for Jesus according to Jewish religious law, to pay taxes to Caesar, a foreigner who occupies the role of emperor and who claims to be the son of God. The image the image on that coin is a graven image, and it is an image of Caesar making that coin in and of itself idolatry. Don't pay treason, pay idolatry. And Jesus knows what they're doing, and he turns it around and says to them, show me the coin, show me this coin that you will pay taxes. Sure enough, they pull out of their pocket the coin, the coin that is Caesar's money. They are the ones, they are the ones that are carrying around Caesar's money, not Jesus. They are the ones who have the emperor's image in their money pouches. They are the ones who have already bought in to this pagan system. And that is the context for Jesus saying to them, render then unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Render unto God what is God's. So as we read this gospel this morning, and as you continue to read it throughout the week, Understand that this is about idolatry, not taxes. Remember, the scripture states that where your treasures are, so there is your heart. The coins, the coins in this text, have the image of God on them. For we, we are the coins. We were created in God's image, every part of us. Our body, our mind, our soul, everything, all that we are, all that we have, all that we long to be, we, are an offering, an offering to God. Now, this is where I begin to tread lightly because 
When I first began my ministry here at St. John's almost a year and a half ago, I was told very clearly, we don't do stewardship. Hasn't been a stewardship committee since 1980-something. No stewardship. No pledge cards, Pastor G. No, we don't do pledge cards here. Never have, never will. The money just shows up at the end of the year. Not to worry. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. But as one of your pastors, I am called to be prayerful, to be concerned about what you and I might be missing in the spiritual discipline of pledging. I'm not worried, but I pray. I pray daily. I pray about the stewardship of a large congregation like St. John's in a beautiful and affluent community like Lamar's having to take loans to pay the bills, to ask money over and over again to pay for the beautiful restoration of these windows windows that are to the glory of God. So maybe someone needs to tell me, what is this all about? No stewardship, no pledging. For I remember well the first lessons that I had in giving, in stewardship, and it was right here at St. John's. I learned very early on, probably about three years old, down there in the little classroom, as we gave our offerings. And we sang the song, Hear the pennies dropping, listen while they fall. Everyone for Jesus, he will get them all. Dropping, dropping ever from each little hand, tis our gift to Jesus from his little band. Now, while we are little, pennies are our store. But when we're older, we will give you more. Though we have not money, we can give you love. For God will own our offering, smiling from above. That's the first lessons of stewardship that we give. We give of ourselves, our time, our talents, and our treasures. That is stewardship. Stewardship of ourselves, giving to the Lord what is the Lord's. In his book, Centered Life, which we've had one class completed and another beginning on the book, Centered Life, by Jack Fortin, he talks about us thinking in terms of a centered life rather than a balanced life. And a centered life means that God in Christ Jesus is the center of our lives and we live faithfully to God moment to moment in everything that we do, in our work, at our homes, in our communities, and yes, 
in our congregations. Stewardship is not just about paying the bills, but it is centering our lives on God. In the pledging process, it not only includes pledging of your gifts, but it is a pledging of your time, a pledging of your prayers. We ask ourselves questions, how much do I give to the church's ministry, to the Lord's work? How much time and talents will I share with the Lord's community? How much? How much do I give to those ministries in our community and the ministries throughout the world? And how much of my time will I give to those ministries? How much of my talents will I use for those ministries of the community? And then, after that is done, I look, how much do I really need to live? That's that big question, how much I need versus how much I want. A continual balance for all of us in this affluent society. How much do I need to save for the future? And then last of all, last of all, how much? How much do I have left to have fun and recreate the energy of life? It is a plan. It is a centering of your life a centering of how much that you give and how much you share. Do this. Do this centering as an individual. Pick up the book in the office. Join one of the classes. Do it on your own, however, but think through that centering, that discipline of how am I living? Do it as an individual and do it as a family. For we are all called, we are all called into a life centered on Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, we give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O oh Lord, from thee. Amen. Those are the words from a hymn, a hymn that was written in the late 1800s. We give thee but thy own. It is our hymn of the day, 686, in your hymn book. And if it's comfortable, please stand and let us sing it together. And as we sing, pray that we might all have a centered life in Christ. Please stand.
Together we can profess what we believe by saying the words of the Apostles' Creed, the back of the hymnal, inside the cover, or page 127, or by memory. What do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us rest and let us pray. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Lord of the church, help us to give to you what is yours. Make us faithful stewards of our time, talents, and treasures. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of creation, help us to share our bounties. Plant in us a willing and able desire to utilize the world's resources wisely and without bias. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of the nations, help us to put aside malice. Teach us to fight for justice to liberate the oppressed, and to advocate for those who have no voice. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, help us in our need. Restore the minds, bodies, and spirits of those who are sick, and soothe those who despair. We especially remember today Carla, and Tara, and baby Devin, Walker, Jill, Mark, Mary Ann, Pastor Gary. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all, help us to support one another. Bless our communities, sustain local businesses, and remove enmity between neighbors. We give thanks for the good news that Hadley Faith Klein is being baptized later this morning. Surround her family with your presence always. And we pray for the safety of farmers. Harvest time is upon us. We pray that they will be safe, comfort those who, have, who grieve now due to loss of life in a recent accident for the Jean Sitzman family. Lord of resurrection, help us to rejoice in your promises. Gladden the hearts of those who grieve. Greet those who die with your reviving grace. Lord, in your mercy. And trusting in your mercy and your goodness, we bring before you these prayers and whatever else you see that we need. In the name of the one who sets us free, Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. We take time to share that now. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. I turned on my mic. You're all done. I'm not done. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Peace. Yeah, this peace sharing business is, 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 is a, a good Lutheran thing to do. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. In the old days, this would take a long time. I mean old days, like 2,000 years ago. 
And 2,000 year ago, years ago, they sat together, they ate together, they prayed together, and they did it at temple. There was no rush to go home to sports or television, Indy 500 or anything like that. It was all about the Lord, wasn't it? Peace of the Lord, Pastor Gene. We receive our offerings, our sacrifices of a new week. We pray our offertory, we are an offering, we rise. God gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, gave it to them saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks saying, take and drink. This is the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
do this in remembrance of me. We do, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We rest and receive what he gives us himself. Amen.
Oh God, we, have, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We rise and send each other out singing, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, verses 1 through 4. If you can, we rest and hear announcements for the week ahead. First, a warm greeting to those who are visiting St. John's. We trust and pray that this time of worship has blessed you in your commitment to Jesus Christ as disciple of your Lord. Amen. The announcements, we added some names in prayer. You perhaps heard the name Tara. That's Tara Burdett and Robert Tr Trobar. The Trobar. Trobar. Bar. <laughs> Mother and father of a new baby boy, Devon. And we pray for Devon. He is in hospital in uh, Sioux Falls and trust doing better. We have a baptism here at 1045 for the family of Derek Klein and Jillian Britt in uh, the baptism of their daughter, Hadley. So when you see them, rejoice in that uh, service of that rite of, of baptism into the family of Christ. Send them a note. Uh, watch for their faces on Facebook. There's a grief uh, bereavement session being put on. We're hosting it on November 6th. It's a Thursday night at 6.30. We're working with hospice who will come and help us prepare for the holidays. It's a 90-minute session. Maybe you know someone in community who's had a loss, a death, a loss of a job, a divorce, some kind of loss, and wants to understand bereavement, grief, how, the impact it has on self, the impact it has on family and community. That's at 6.30, November 6th. Be watching for more announcements. Certainly our hearts go out to the Sitzman family and the loss of Jean this week. 
And then this afternoon at 4 o'clock, the youth gather to uh, pray, play. Some of them will be thinking ahead, planning ahead for Detroit. The other night, uh, I don't remember when I was last up till 1 in the morning. That was a long time ago. And the kids, we had 12 confirmation kids, and they brought some friends. We were 29 young people in the basement having fun playing hide-and-seek, not in this space, but out in the building. They had pizza, and uh, they're quite the evangelists. So imagine, imagine if the kids could bring each a friend or two, 12 into 30, 29, you do the math. You were there. It was exciting, wasn't it? Yeah, it was great fun. You mentioned The Centered Life. The author of that book is coming at the end of January. You can pick up a copy of the author and join a group. There's another Bible study going on now that'll get repeated after Christmas. It'll get repeated on a Saturday afternoon. It's called The Hole in Our Gospel, H-O-L-E, The Hole in Our Gospel. If you can stay this morning, it's meeting in the library. If we fill up that room, we'll go down to the dining hall. Are there other announcements? Uh, I ask your prayers, prayers of joy and safety. Um, Rich and I will be traveling to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I will be doing the wedding service of our son Craig and his fiance Lindsay um, being married next Saturday at five o'clock at St. John's Episcopal Church but I will be doing the service there you go exciting we'll remember you in prayer yes yes and I get we wish them the best how about that that's easy that's exciting yes it yeah. is if you're unclear about anything please talk to us or talk to the office staff now or during the week. We go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.